Hello guys, Winston here. One of the most mysterious subjects for people just starting out with CNC is feeds and speeds. Getting that perfect combination of travel speed and spindle RPM plays a big role in determining whether or not your CNC project ends in success or failure. Many of us, myself included, started out by having this information spoon-fed to us. Looking up cutting parameters in a chart is easy and safe, but the information you get from sources like Carbide3D's suggested feeds and speeds table is just that, a suggestion. Those were determined empirically using one type of end mill on a finite set of materials with one objective, to achieve a nice usable surface finish on the first try. If you want to use an end mill with a different geometry, or a different coating, or on different materials, or you're trying to remove large amounts of material fast, then you're going to have to step away from the safety blanket of predetermined feeds and speeds. What I want to do in this video is give you a high level crash course in calculating and applying feeds and speeds knowledge. I'm primarily looking to give you guys some insight and intuition into the physical process of machining so that you're better prepared to receive knowledge from people who are smarter than I am. I'm just barely going to touch on the formulas and calculations you'll need to know because sources like John Saunders and Applied Science and CNC Cookbook all do better jobs than I ever could on this subject. That, and I don't want to sit here and speak at you guys for 25 minutes. So let's cut to a new camera angle and start laying out the basics. This is a crude representation of the cross section of an end mill. I realize this looks like a fidget spinner, just bear with me here. The shaded section here represents material to be removed as the cutter traverses from left to right. Two of the most important variables in the calculation of feeds and speeds are SFM, surface feet per minute, and IPT, inches per tooth. Here's what those values represent. SFM details how fast the edge of your cutter is moving. How many feet does the cutting edge travel in one minute? That's basically the circumference of the end mill times the number of revolutions per minute. Inch per tooth is how far into the material your cutter has advanced each time a tooth comes around. This is also the thickness of the chip that you can measure if you're cutting a material that shaves off cleanly. IPT is sometimes referred to with other names or units like chip load or inches per revolution. When you buy an end mill, the vendor will usually have a table of recommended SFM and or IPT. What they don't tell you is RPM and feed rate. This is your sign that you've left the little leagues and are now entering machinist territory. Your job is to derive a feed rate given the constraints of your machine. For example, let's say I have a 3 flute uncoated carbide end mill that I want to use in aluminum. I'll turn to an online calculator like this one to get a ballpark estimate for a feed rate to start with. I'll plug in my end mill information into the calculator and look up a suitable chip load. For a plain carbide end mill, this vendor recommends a chip load of between 1 to 2 thousandths of an inch. You're not going to break any high-speed machining records with a Shaboko, so just accept that you'll be working near the lower bound of that range. SFM is a parameter that should be considered more a guideline than anything else, especially since the recommended SFM for aluminum dictates an impossible RPM to achieve on the Shaboko. So I'm just going to put my foot down here and say we're going to use 10,000 RPM. This leaves us with a recommended feed rate of 30 inches per minute. Feed rate, of course, isn't the only cutting parameter we need to know, for that, you can try and match the horsepower of your spindle with material removal rates, but honestly, you'll run out of machine rigidity long before you reach that theoretical limit. JPL Richard has a good rule of thumb I like to use, which is a 0.25 inch end mill can cut 25 thousandths of an inch deep. That lines up pretty well with Carbide 3D's recommendations, except for RPM which I find to be way too high. I took the recommendation of my feeds and speeds calculator and I started at 30 inches per minute on this pocketing operation. However, during my tests, I was finding some weird vibration issues traveling in the positive Y direction. And this wasn't chatter, it was a quirk of the Shapeoko's rigidity and modes of vibration. People generally recommend feeding faster to overcome chatter, that didn't help in my case. What I had to do instead was slow down my feed rates and engage less material at a time. That is, use a smaller step over. Recommended feed rates are not firm. You need to use your intuition and apply correction factors to them based on the capabilities of your machine. You may want to back down by 10, 20, even 50% depending on the rigidity of your machine and how well calibrated it is. I backed off by 17% to 25 inches per minute and found that my CNC became very well mannered and trustworthy enough to let run indefinitely without problems. But in this example, you shouldn't go any slower than 50% of the recommended feed rate. That would make your chip load dangerously low. To explain why that matters, let's go back to the desk cam. Every cutter has a finite sharpness represented by the blunted edge on my spinner. Represented by the blunted edge of my end mill model. 
If the amount your end mill advances isn't enough for the next tooth to properly bite into the material, then it just ends up smearing or pushing the material away. This isn't cutting, it's burnishing, and it's not healthy for your end mill. It creates friction and heat, and it dulls your cutter. There's also an effect called chip thinning. As your end mill reaches the root of the chip, it's actually cutting thinner than your feeds and speeds calculator predicts because of geometry. At this point, assuming your end mill is even cutting more than it is rubbing, you're ripping out smaller chips that have a smaller capacity to carry away excess heat that's generated by the violent shearing action of machining. This all contributes to the downward spiral of your end mills. As a rule of thumb, never accept a nominal chip load of less than half a thou. This all, of course, is essential if you're cutting aluminum or other metals, but honestly, in wood, I'll often wing it and cut by ear. I'll ramp up my router speed if it sounds like it's struggling or not cutting cleanly, I'll increase my feed rates if it sounds like I'm leaving performance untapped. You have a lot more wiggle room with wood, so don't let a lack of feeds and speeds knowledge stop you from milling the easy stuff. Seriously, do you think people who use routers manually have calibrated forearms that push material across the cutter at a calculated speed? No. So just go out there and make something. Now for plastics, thermal considerations are a bigger issue, so choosing a spindle RPM is a no-brainer for me, as low as possible. The feed rate will fall out from there. Different cutter geometries will also affect your cutting parameters. I'll usually back off on my depth of cut by about 40% when using downcutting end mills since they don't do a good job of clearing chips. Conversely, special coatings and lubrication will generally allow you to be a little more aggressive with choosing your cutting parameters. And that basically covers what I wanted to talk about today. There's no magical cutting recipe that will work for all of your needs. There are guidelines that will get you close, and then you need to exercise your judgment to dial in the best settings for your setup. Hopefully, you'll now be able to look at documentation from end mill vendors and figure out where to start for a variety of materials. If this subject interests you, I invite you to stare at literally hours of discussions of feeds and speeds calculations on the internet. I'll have links to some of my favorites in the description box down below. If this subject does not interest you, then I hope I saved you time by helping you discover your inner apathy in a much shorter video. And that's all I have for this week. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and if you'll excuse me, I have some cleansing to do.